So now, Mr. Wiseman, as you can see, Mr. Wiseman is now jo、uh, joining our panel of judges because we're about to start the final contest of pitch. This year, we have. 102 teams from 17 countries joining us, and after yesterday's semi-final, eight finalists have emerged. Which team is going to bring home 30,000 U.S. dollar? We will soon find out. And before we start the final contest, let me first introduce each and every of our judges. First of all, our chief judge, Mr. Anis Uzaman, sir, would you please stand up and wave your hand to all of our audience and contestants again? Mr. Peter Shi, general partner of Accorn Pacific Ventures. Mr. Shi. And next, Mr. Wayne Huang, founder and CEO of Armorize Technologies. Mr. Sam Lai, Managing Director of Yushan Ventures. Welcome. Ms. Rain Ma, Partner of 500 Startups. And Mr. Shen Hui Tong, Director of Infocom. Welcome. Last but not least, Mr. Jerry Yang, General Partner of Hardware Club. Welcome, Jerry. All right. We have eight finalists, and may I remind you that each team you will have ten minutes to present, and then we will have five minutes for the judges to ask questions. And that five minutes, including question asking. So judges, please be precise. All right, let me introduce our first team, Introix. Introix is a company that provides software solutions to improve energy efficiency and to help build a smart home. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our first team, Introix. Hello,、um, I'm Clarissa. I'm in charge of business development for Introix, and here in Introix, we believe that energy savings comes from better information. Uh, so our company started in 2012.、Uh, we started out as an energy、uh, software solution、uh, company, where we provide、um, energy management solutions for enterprises,、uh, such as data,、um, sorry,、uh, data centers, energy, energy retailers, as well as building projects. So we、uh, we help them to extract data and create、um, uh, powerful and meaningful analytics for them. To optimize their energy consumption,、uh, in 2014 we went on to into the smart home space, where we created an integrated open platform for、um, smart devices to come together to create an intuitive、uh, smart home ecosystem. And in 2016 we have、uh, fin finally、um, uh, uh, launched our product. And right now we are actually going into、uh, manufacturing and going into、uh, delivering to our consumers. Uh, so the problem that we see in Intrax is that with greater connectivity and with abundant information, we realize that there's so much、uh, potential that information can provide to improve our lives, and、uh, we also believe that energy saving can come hand in hand with comfort and convenience. So、uh, what we do is that we believe that we want to empower people to lead better lives, to from the extraction of data and from the from the crunching of data into meaningful、uh, outputs. So over here is our energy management、uh, software solution, where we have currently worked with solar battery generators,、uh, energy retailers, as well as data centers. Over here, we actually provided them to extract data, and we actually provide a dashboard for them to、uh, understand their energy consumption and also their operating efficiencies. Um, on top of it, right?、Uh, we actually work on different、uh, multiple verticals. So, should you have a lighting system or a heating and cooling system, we're actually able to integrate and incorporate it into the same kind of solutions.、Uh, these are just some of our clients and our partners that we've worked with, mostly uh, uh, the, those that are based in Singapore. So, we've worked with people like Pacific Light, Semcorp. These are energy retailers. Over here, this is a、uh, uh, solar battery generators. Um, some、uh, manufacturers, as well as research institutes, and some government agencies based in Singapore. 
So in 2014, Singapore launched the Smart Nation Initiative. And um, having been an Infocom company, we want to leverage on it to bring in um, better, uh, better solutions for people at home. And the core of the Smart Nation Initiative is to bring energy sustainability in Singapore. And in Singapore, we, we don't have resources. We only have a, we're a little tiny island with no resources. So the best way to achieve energy sustainability is actually through energy savings because we can't produce more electricity. So we come in as a, as a company that uh, takes in information and actually takes over the decision making from people to be able to optimize the energy consumption without ha having them to think about it and without having them to compromise on their comfort and their convenience. So therefore, we produce our own product, Kluk, which actually means smart. Uh, it is actually a product that is able to create context for all your smart devices at home to take in multiple data points and create meaningful, intuitive output for people at home as well as for industries um, wherever they are. So uh, 2015, we started Kluk Air, which is actually an IR blaster. We ha I have it right here. So this is actually an IR blaster that actually takes in information from external weather data, takes in location data, takes in information from your sensors, from uh, temperature, from humidity, and um, also takes in user preference and then be able to output it to give you thermal comfort at the same time making sure you don't waste energy. And then in 2016, we extended the product into Kluk Home where it is actually a smart home hub that is able to integrate third-party devices into a single platform, into a single app. So um, as I've mentioned over here, we are able to connect to multiple devices, and we're also able to connect to multiple brands. So in this case, for air conditioning, we're able to connect to Mitsubishi, Panasonic, even to office air conditioning solutions, uh, such as the HVAC and the VRD system. So this is just a little bit about our app. Uh, we are able to provide information, analytics, and recommend um, you know, energy, energy, energy optimal solutions for them to make sure that they do not waste energy without compromising on the comfort. So here's a little bit on our app. So you can see here we are able to integrate them, even including the controls. So you see there's air conditioning, there's lighting, and there's energy monitoring. Um, so as I've touched on it, it's just, uh, just the idea of contextual awareness, where we take in multiple data points to create a single output in order to bring comfort and energy savings. Okay, so let's go into our business, uh, business model. So um, IoT solutions is still very novel, it is still very new, and it is still quite pricey at this moment. So in order to make it available and affordable for people, we actually work on a B2B2C model, where we work with telcos and energy uh, retailers to create a, a, subs a subscription model for um, consumers to be able to afford these IoT solutions in their home right now. So as you can see here, we work with Mobile One, which is actually a telco company in Singapore, where we are able to reduce the cost to uh, 699 Singapore dollars a month, where they are able to um, get the energy monitoring solutions, uh, remotely control their devices, as well as um, attain thermal comfort with just 699 a month. And then, uh, so here is a little bit more about the distribution channel. We work with government agencies, we work with uh, companies, and then a small little portion on B2C sales. Um, here's a little bit more on our project pipeline. Currently, we have already uh, um, fixed a um, couple of projects currently in Singapore. So uh, mostly on um, building projects with property developers as well as um, the housing board agencies in Singapore. So if, as you can see here, um, we do have a couple of traction and right now we're in Taiwan here to look for manufacturers to make it happen for us. Okay, so ultimately we would like to achieve a big data marketplace where we are also able to monetize the data to sell it to companies as well as to agencies in order to create a mass value for people to better their lives. Uh, here. Okay, next phase. So currently we are actually looking, uh, currently we already completed R&D and we would like to scale up our business. So um, we are looking for about $4 million in um, investments so that we can penetrate new markets. Uh, we have identified markets like uh, Japan, like um, 
Southeast Asia as well as Australia to bring in our, our solutions over. And uh, we would like to definitely improve, uh, our, develop our technology to integrate more, more brands, more third party devices into our platform and definitely to, to uh, push our marketing and sales to, uh, to bring out um, more traction. So let me just end off with a little um, quote from Atul Butte, where hiding within those data is knowledge, and knowledge that could change the world. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, we will have five minutes for the judges to ask questions, and the question asking will be included in the five minutes. So judge, if you have a question, please raise your hand now. Mr. She, please. Mr. She. She, I'm sorry. Yeah. Hi. Uh, this is great. Uh, you're attacking a very good uh, sector. Thank you. But you do not show any ROI to your customers. Care to I talk see. about that? Okay. Um, currently, uh, with our with our current uh, you know with our current uh, what do you call this capital and with the amount that uh, the traction that we're seeing for 2016, we can see about an ROI of about uh, 2.1 2.1 uh, 2.1 times. Uh, yeah, 2.1 uh, 2 times the ROI because uh, uh, currently we actually already attain about 500 to 700 thousand in uh, dollars in investments. So with our current projection of about uh, no, one not for investors, for customers. Customers. Mm. ROI. Okay. Um, currently, um, I'm seeing about. Sorry, I'm not able to answer the questions because I'm just representing. <laughs> no problem. So the key, yeah. key question here is yeah. you have a basic package and a premium package. Right. Of course, you'd like to see how long your customers can recoup the investment they have, also including the subscription cost, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so regarding that, uh, okay. So with the subscription cost, right, they're able to achieve ROI uh, in about two years. That's why we spread out our cost uh, for a subscription based on to a 24-month um, length. So they're able to uh, gain... Uh, ROI in about two years time. Mm. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you. Wayne, please. Yeah, I had a similar question. I couldn't yeah. understand the value proposition for your customers. Um, so I installed this device and it saves me Energy. electricity. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, right. and it takes, it, it would take two years to recoup my investment. Right. Okay, got it. Yeah. Jerry? How did you come up, how did you come up with the pricing? The What's pricing? the logic behind six ninety nine per month? Okay. How, yeah. uh, How so, did you do that? So the cost is from the package. So the the package that we provide. Um, can I just? Yeah, but the consumers don't care. Oh right. So um, from six ninety nine a month, uh, they are able. Okay. So we provide a package of uh, three smart plugs, uh, two air conditioning control, as well as a home hub that is extendable to multiple devices. So with six ninety nine a month, you get to receive, uh, you know, you get to remotely control your devices from anywhere and everywhere. So you're hoping that they think about it as a cell phone, as a smartphone sort of subsidy. Yeah, they plan. take it as a convenience What, what happens if they return the devices after a couple of months, they just don't want it anymore? Are you going to take the, are you going to take the devices back or? Uh, yeah, we're gonna t uh, because uh, it is going through a B2B2C model. So the, pers uh, the, the entity that will take back the, mod uh, the devices would be our partner. And you're convinced that those big guys that you're negotiating with as a young lady, they're going to shoulder that working capital for you? Sorry? Are you convinced that those partners you have, those big uh, dirty corporates, they're going to shoulder the working capital for you by taking the devices back? Are you you're pretty sure about that? or? Uh, because I think uh, when we come into the deal, we make sure that we also... You know, we also mitigate our risk. So they actually, we actually sell them in box. So they actually purchase them in box and then they made it available for us. I have no further question, but if, if you can do that, I want to hire you as my sales guy. <laughs> Thank you. Judges, any more questions? Yeah. Wayne? So, so there is a lot of devices in my home consuming electricity. Right. Um, so how do I install this? Do I install this on a particular device, like on my um, dishwasher or on my you know, air con? Okay. Where do I install it? Okay, so our home hub actually works on Zigbee and Wi-Fi. So any devices that has Zigbee and Wi-Fi, we're able to connect to it. So uh, whether or not your dishwasher is able to connect to us is whether it is on the Zigbee protocol or whether it has an API. So for now, we have already connected to smart lights. 
to um, motion detectors to... So, so you can connect to multiple devices right. in my home as long as the API is supported by you? Yes, API is supported and Zigbee. Any more questions? All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for our team one, IntroX. <laughs> Introducing our team two, Connectra. Connectra, they're the winner of the best startup at Web Summit pitch last year. Connectra developed a sensor widely known as Fitbit for cows. This, can, uh, this sensor, it can detect various behaviors and provide farmers with health insights, thus to improve animal health. Ladies and gentlemen, Connectra. Thank you very much. So in this world, we're going to have 9 billion people by two, 2050. This means that in order to feed all these people, we're going to have to increase food production by 60% roughly. So at Connectra, we want to solve this problem sustainably. Um, let's take the dairy industry. That's what we're starting off with. Milk is a key source of protein and nutrients for our bodies. Um, but how do you get more milk? More cows is not the answer. It's actually more milk from fewer cows. That's, that's more sustainable. So how do you get more milk from fewer cows? Well, the number one driver for this is actually animal health. It's the difference between 10 kilos of milk per cow per day or 40 kilos. And how do you improve that? Well, a farmer tells us they need to spend more time on their, on their cows. They need to put increased labor. Um, we need to decrease that labor and watch those cows 24 seven. And that's actually where we come in. I'll come back to that later. Then we need better farm education. The farmer knowledge varies region by region. And not every farmer knows how to increase the health of their herd. So our solution is actually this device. Uh, we developed a, a Fitbit for cows, that's how you could call it. And it, what it does, it has a 3D accelerometer in here. And by using deep learning algorithms, we can see if the cow is walking, if it's standing, or if it's eating, ruminating, et cetera. It sits on the neck of the cow. And we then process this, process this information in the cloud. That's where our core, the core of our product is. And we can um, convert those uh, actions, and we, and we can learn the actual individual behavior of the cow. And by learning that, then you can see whenever it changes, there's a reason for it, and we generate insights, and we send those to the farmer. So farmer tell us, farmers tell us they don't want more data. They don't want graphs that they need to analyze. They actually want insights. They want actionable insights. They want to know what happened, how it happened, and what they can do about it. And that's what we provide. We designed a clean and intuitive interface that's anything else than the farming industry has ever seen before. So far, we've been working on this for about a year and a half. Uh, we've made great progress. Uh, we have, we're not launched yet, but we already have 10,000 cows in the trial pipeline with committed customers. And we're talking to a very large dairy brand that I'm sure you guys all know. They have 177,000 farms in their management. And with a 94% gross margin expected by year three, um, it's a really healthy business. So let's talk about the uh, market opportunity. Um, there's 1.5 billion cows on this planet. It's a lot of cows. 270 million of that are in the EU and US alone. The savings for a farmer with only one of the features that we provide can already be 250 US dollar per cow per year. And this is research validated. With all the other features we provide, that can be even more. Then only 20% of the farmers today actually use any kind of technology to keep the track of the health of the herd. And so there's 80% white space. That's a huge opportunity for us. Then competition. We're kind of the Tesla versus the Lada. We, um, the, the competitors, they sell you uh, this product, this hardware product. We, uh, there's upfront costs. We don't, there's no upfront cost for our product. There's a try-by sales, uh, try-by pay-as-you-go model where it's a subscription-based. Uh, subscription and we get better every, every couple months because our core is actually in the cloud. Um, we roll out new features 
uh, the competitors, you buy the hardware, you're kind of stuck with it for five to 10 years until you have to refresh the hardware. Then we have a great team to pull this off. We have credentials from Microsoft, Stanford University, PhD in Bayesian Reasoning, uh, Machine Learning, previous startup experience, and also industry expert. Then we're not doing this alone. Uh, we have leading Dairy Research Institute that help us out and validate, uh, validate our product. So please help us feed the world by 20, 2050. And thank you very much. Thank you. Are you sure you don't want to continue? We have no, five that's more enough. minutes. That's all right. I think uh, I've explained enough, and the questions are more important. This is my colleague, Niels Molinar, is going to help out. He's, uh, the, he's also the uh, farm expert. And um, yeah, so hit it off. Judges? Why are you here? Why are we here at this conference? Well, we were uh, actually invited. Um, and so I, I think for us, it's an opportunity to also contact with potential hardware manufacturers. Something I forgot to mention is that we're launching this product at the end of the year. Uh, we're not launched right now, we're in trial. And so by the end of the year, uh, we're gonna need to produce by then or next year, um, we're gonna need to produce a lot of uh, hardware. And there's a lot of hardware manufacturers here that are very specialized, uh, so that could be potential cooperation for, for, for us. Jerry? So we all know that the cows move very slowly. And how do you detect the movement and how do you, you know, this, the, the data mu must have been very, very noisy, I guess. So this is where our data scientists come in, right? We have this accelerometer on the neck of a cow and we use these complicated deep learning algorithms and they do this for us. So we actually tell the algorithm what is going on and they try to find patterns in this data. So the trick is that all the nuances we get from the data that as a human we wouldn't understand, these algorithms can. So even with all the noise and all the stuff going on, these algorithms are very accurate at finding out what a cow is actually doing. I mean, do you use gyroscopes or like accelerometers or? Uh, yeah, both. It's, it's yeah. both. Off the shelf? Yeah. And you're able to do that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Now, another question, how about liability? What if you do that and you get the wrong data and it turns out that you get the wrong di di diagnosis of the, of the cows and whether your partners or maybe it's the farmers that come around and sue you because it caused them loss, how do you prevent that? Um, so currently we also have algorithms in place to detect that something is wrong. So in a sense that we understand when it's on a cow and we understand um, when behavior is as expected and if something else is going on, then we, act we know this as well. So we actually can mention to the farmer that something is wrong, that it's not as expected before it goes wrong as well. And so at the end, it's actually also, we, we might say that this cow has a foot problem. Uh, that's, that's what we detected. We show them why we detected it. So we actually show the, 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 the graphs where it's well, based my on. My question is more like, what if the cow doesn't have any problem and you say that well, it has problem? Well, at the end, the farmer is going to manually inspect the animal. And if they find out there's nothing wrong, I mean, he knows cows, right? Does, doesn't that damage your repu reputation? Your, you know, and they'll just cut the uh, package and Are, cut this. Our system is actually self-learning, so if it's incorrect, if, we, if he finds a wrong, uh, wrong detection, he can actually say that to the system, and it will self-learn, it will adjust, because maybe the farm has different practices that are different from, uh, from other farms, maybe from the most farms, and it will, it will adjust itself. So let's say, let's say you have to do clinical clinic trial, right, basically, right? So how many cows times how many days of data do you think that you would need before you can roll out like you know grand scale or so so currently um, we're working on this trial with a university which is a university that specializes in agriculture so we're involved with uh, researchers lecturers and veterinarians and they're actually proposing this for us right so we're asking them what can we do and how do we need to do this so we use their knowledge to set up the trial uh, but still we expect to be uh, commercial by the end of the year so that is all done before we go commercial and so generally how many cows um, I don't know the answer by heart. I'm not a data scientist. Okay. If you need the answer, I can get you into contact with them. Okay. I have a, oh, I have a question. Actually, I actually have two questions. Like, um, why, I guess, why did you guys decide to do this? And then number two, like, what's your background? What's your connection to the industry? And, and number two, I, I don't think either me or Norway really understood how you're giving this away. 
Um, one, you said your competitor charges, you know, five figures um, for those for the same product. And how are they doing, by the way? Okay, so the first question was, uh, sorry. What is, how does your background or okay. your team's background relate to this? this? All right, so why are we doing this? It's a huge opportunity. There's, it's in the farming industry, especially the dairy industry as well, is very underserved with the newest technology. Uh, right now, our competitors, for instance, they have a pedometer that sits around the ankle, ankle of the cow, and then um, they will only show you the data. They don't interpret the data. So there's a lot of data that's unused. So we want to help the farmers uh, not go through that data, but actually get something out of it. My background is design. His background, he worked at uh, farming companies, and then we have a lot of technological. We have partners that uh, know a lot about dairy. And how are you giving this away for free? Like, no, no, no. Um, we sense. have a subscription-based model. So, but, but the initial thing is free. So you're the, it give is free. Yeah, you pay per cow per month, and you will just get the hardware and all the base station and everything. Yes. Time's up. All right. Thank you, Connectra. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause to Connectra. Our next team is FlexWave. FlexWave's vision is to bring more solar energy to our daily life. Their modules are flexible, durable, and can fully charge an iPhone 6 in four hours. Please welcome FlexWave. Hi, I am Min Hong from FlexWave. We want to change the world by promoting more solar energy to people. Uh, there's two new records has been set for past two days in Taiwan. One is the high temperature. It reached to 68.7 degrees Celsius, uh, which is the hottest June ever over the past 100 years in Taipei. This high temperature is, is the main reason for the power loading, the high power loading in Taiwan. Uh, only 1.6% left for the backup power capacity. So we are this close to the huge blackout in Taiwan. So we are thinking that uh, with this, uh, can we solve this problem? Yes, we can replace the electricity uh, by renewable energy. So you can see the, the target in the global. Uh, to, in 2025, uh, America want to achieve a target of their 25% of their energy uh, coming from renewable energy. And there will be 20% in EU, 50% in China, and 10% in Taiwan, which is almost doubling or tripling the size from now. And there will be more than $400 billion invest in solar energy. So we are thinking that with this much uh, money improved, why, how come we are not seeing the solar product in our daily life very often? Well, this may explain why. If we, if we apply the current solution, apply the current solar module to our daily life, it just looks bulky, rigid, and only will have one color. It's just not pretty and not user friendly. So Flexway here, we solve this problem by this uh, invisible and flexible solar concentrator technology. We flip the solar cell from horizontally to vertically and put it on the side of the module and cover the module by the waveguide material. So the light shining on the waveguide will guide, will absorb and guide just like optical fiber to the side of the solar cell to generate electricity. Therefore, we present the idea of invisible module. So with this invisible, mo invisible module, we can put the solar power on the device, on your product, without affecting the appearance. Moreover, we improve the capturing angle from 70 degree to 120 degrees, as compared to traditional. Means we don't need a sun tracker. We just put a panel there and we can reduce 66% usage of solar cell. We are 50% lighter and uh, cost, very cost effective and highly industrial applicable. Our advantage, uh, we are flexible, we can be highly transparent, we can be colorful, we can be shapeable. shapeable. We can combine with plastic, fibers, clothes, and we can insert LED or other IC device inside for more application. We are durable, we, we are waterproof, UV resist, and we are powerful. We can charge iPhone, fully charge iPhone 6 in four hours by our FI size module. 
So by this technology, we can bring things from impossible to reality. So we can bring more solar energy to our daily life. Let's see our example. First, Ripple. This is a solar watch band for Pebble Time smartwatch. It can provide 13 hours battery life for a smartwatch uh, in under one hour sunshine. This is a portable solar device. It's work on the go. And the same idea can apply for other wearables. Market size will be $1 million in future. The other application, we call it Butterfly. Uh, this is a combination of LED and a solar cell. We make it together to achieve a sustainable module. It absorbs the, the light in the daytime, store it, and charge the LED when you need. It's very ideal for smart clothes, bags. And we can recycle the LED light to power up the solar cell for itself. We also have solution for the indoor application. Uh, we can have the indoor light just like this and to power up the IoT sensors and beacons. We can replace the disp disposal battery for them. So imagine in a smart city, we have to install thousands of beacons, thousands of IoT sensors. But when the day you have to replace the, electric the, replace the batteries, there will be a huge nightmare. So by our sustainable module, you can save the main power to replace it. And when you turn on the light, you turn on the device. Very convenient. The market size will be 60 million in future. Here is another an innovation, three-dimensional solar module. We bring the solar module from two-dimensional rectangular shape to three-dimensional because we are flexible, bendable, shadable, so we can put the PV power on the curved surface. It means we can put solar energy on almost anything. We capture the light from 360 degrees. This is a game changer. So we, this is a brand new innovation which can have a lot of application on it. So here I would like to invite you all who have interest in, in this uh, technology can find out more application to use more solar power to our environment. <coughs> our competitor, we are the only solution of the flex, great flexibility, durability uh, among other competitors, which they, they are rigid only. We have t five team members, including three PhDs, two masters covering from R&D background to product development background and one financial background. Marketing plan, we are targeting the market, uh, the product with battery and with charge, charge need. And or we can up, upgrade the customer's product. Well, we would like to find a niche market for our uh, early stage. Uh, we have several unique selling proposition, right, such as free power source, we can save battery, we are green energy, we are wireless charging, waterproof and flexible. The market size uh, the, the financial projection will be uh, 900K USD in 2018. Uh, we have a B2B model to licensing our uh, technology to our collaboration companies, or we can OEM or ODM for them. We have B2C model to crowdfunding on Kickstarter, which we work with a design company in Taiwan, Min Qi Xiang Chuang Zhao, and to have a uh, large our product on Kickstarter. And we have individual service and customization for customers, products, and we can do the advi advising. We are looking forward to build a technical brand, just like Intel Inside. Every suitable product will have flex waste module. First stage, we are aiming to power for small devices such as IoT sensors, wearables, then medium device, smart clothes, consuming products, then bigger device such as electric vehicle, and buildings. So we are bringing an idea to power for yourself. Uh, take American for example, uh, the a household will consume 30K one hour, uh, one hour power per day. So if you apply FlexWay solution, they will, we can support by five, five to 10% for a household and even more for public buildings. So we are very ideal uh, for ideal solution for the distributed energy, which we don't rely the big, only rely on the big solar power plant. We, we can generate electricity everywhere in the world. 
and to, to lower down the burden of the uh, electricity grid. Um, and moreover, some people might think renewable energy is very far from us. We cannot see it. And it's government's business. Governments have to find a place to, to build a solar power plant. But here, we're using different approach to bring solar energy to everyone. And moreover, for solar company, many solar companies, they rely on government's money support to sell their product. But, but facing, they are facing a huge financial challenge in recent years. Many companies go to bankrupt, like my former company. So that gave me motivation to find out the new solution to it. So here, I would like to invite everyone to participate in using more renewable energy with us uh, for creating a better tomorrow. Uh, this is Flaxway I'm Minho. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So I have a quick question for you. Yeah. So is it um, just helping with the usage or you're also seeing better efficiency per unit? Uh, excuse me, again? So like with the flexibility, yes. is it just helping with the usage or you're also getting better efficiency per cell? Oh, no, no. Actually, we can improve the efficiency, but for most of the case, uh, the efficiency will be not as good as the traditional one. But How many percent down? Uh, it's like 60. Uh, for example, if the traditional one is 20 percent for the uh, single crystal lights, uh, silicon wave uh, solar cell, we are like 12 percent. Okay. But actually, we comp compromise by the uh, wider uh, absorption angle. We work longer than the silicon solar cell because they are using the uh, glass. Glass will reflect the, the light on certain angle. We are capturing a, bit, uh, a wider range. Do you have patent? Uh, uh, yes, signal? patent. We have nine patents around the world and okay. two uh, in international journal publications okay. with impact factor, impact factor more than 10. Who developed this technology? Uh, me, uh, my, my co uh, our uh, founder, uh, the Jin Shen Chou. And what is his background? Can you say? Uh, his, uh, solar s uh, his background is uh, solar cell, solar cell company. Yeah. Yeah, please. Please. Yeah, I mean, uh, if your product does what you claim, uh, yeah. my question really is what's the problem? Why don't you dominate the market now? Uh, we are doing it now. We are doing it from small to big, actually. And, and uh, so we start with the IoT device because we uh, start, start everything from small to big, just like my three stage. Do you have any companies that you are doing proofs of concept with? Uh, you know? uh, yes, we sign several NDA with several companies around the world now. And we are working with some prototype now, exchanging the sample and uh, discussing now. But there is no product yet. Uh, there is no product yet, right. Jerry? Yeah, please. So I've, I've been watching very closely because you put a lot of information on the slides, but it's one thing that really troubled me. After everything you do, you did, uh, you're projecting a 900K revenue in 2018? Yes. Is that, are you being modest or is it just that there's, there's no such market? Uh, actually, the market is quite big. So I, I cannot imagine how the market after two so, or three So years. you don't have the right go-to-market strategy so that by year three, you're still like 900K. And you're expecting us to put money into your startups and to reach 900K revenue in three years? Or uh, Actually, we sell some small product now, actually. And uh, we, we calculate from the, the model we are doing now. Okay. So we have the strategy to do it. Okay. okay. Just, just keep it in mind when you're asking investors to yes. invest in a company that is projected to to generate 900k revenue in three years. That's, that's not the right uh, kind of uh, language you want to communicate, actually. OK, thank okay. you. Judges? Why you're here? When, when do you think your company is going to have $300 million of revenue? Uh, I think maybe two years, three years. It's, it's difficult to say, depending on if there is any big player to join with us. If there is a big player, I think that will be very, very soon. Because when? the market size was so huge. Five years, eight years, ten years. Mm, I think within ten years. Within ten years. Yes. At the time when your revenue is three hundred million dollars, yes. how much do you think you are going to be selling in terms of uh, uh, spending in terms of sales and marketing? Oh. I, I challenge you this question because I believe your go-to market is very difficult. Your technology is so flexible. For different applications, you would require different types of customization. 
and lots of different business model negotiation and customization yes. in terms of technology and productization. So at $300 million of revenue, how much are you going to be using or spending in sales and marketing? Actually, this is a very good question. And uh, this is actually the, the, the main thing we have to deal with in the past 10 years, in the next 10 years, I mean. So you mean how much? I, I, I think we will make a proper plan. Because in our team members, we don't have the very strong uh, financial planning or marketing background. And in the future, if I, we have uh, the new investment, we will hire people from, from this area to help us to make a proper plan to enter the market. So I missed the point. Did you say your company has been around for 10 years now? Uh, no, no, no. It's, we, we, we only for two years. Oh, okay, two great. Years company. Yes. Last question, if I may. Yeah. Since you are doing with energy, why are you wearing ties and long sleeves? You should be wearing shorts. Just kidding. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay. Because I look fat in the shorts. <laughs> thank you, judges. And the time is up. Thank you, okay, Flex thank Wave. You. Thank you. The next team is Skywatch Innovation. Skywatch Innovation offers security software platform for video surveillance that features ease of use, installation, and cloud recording. Please welcome Skywatch Innovation. Uh, hello, uh, welcome. Skywatch is an intelligent home automation product. And we like to say that with Skywatch, your house becomes home and your place becomes your friends. We offer a range of network cameras and sensors and they are connected to our um, cloud-based IoT platform. And here are a list of our current customers and they're mostly stores as you can see. They range from one or two stores to 100 or 200 stores on the right. And they all face uh, similar questions or problems when we talk to our customers. Um, basically government regulation and cash flow and personnel, but most of all, what they want to do is having a safe and secure environment for their um, company to operate in. So most of them would tend to go and subscribe for a security service. The reason is that it is extremely difficult and expensive for these stores, even at 200 store scale, to build their own security services. You, you have your, your hard drives at local site and you have your your personnel, IT personnel, and you have your cloud machines. So it's really, really expensive in terms of the technology and cost involved. Now, usually they will go and subscribe for its uh, professional security uh, service. But running a security service is actually pretty expensive. And this is why one of the reasons why they're so expensive, uh, because they have security centers to filter out all these false alarms. So we think that security centers needs to be a bit smarter. They need to have been have a bit more intelligence. And what we think is that how much intelligence is sufficient? Where do we draw the line, right? So we like to say that a modern security system should make intelligent observations such that human can make informed decisions. And we like to say that we like to uh, uh, um, assume or, or maybe, maybe tell you, you guys that Skywatch it has a solution for this. And all these buzzwords down there, I, I like to just walk you through a few things that we did to sort of make uh, a modern security system better. Um, the first thing we did is that we built a IoT platform that connects all these devices together. There's a, a, a several advantages to this. First, all these devices are connected on the cloud. So it makes things very easy to install. And secondly, we can record all these data on the cloud if, if needed. And this also allows a user to connect to multiple places within one single login. Now, another advantage is that since you have all these um, devices on the cloud, you can add features without changing the hardware. This is one of the examples. We can skip the less important bits and fast forward when, uh, when when basic a, a slowdown when important things occur, and this is already on the product uh, on the market for uh, on our platform. Now we also have experimented or released a few um, more algorithms or feature. This is done for a few customers where they want to know a bit more about their store's food traffic and gender distribution. Um, 
And then we also have experimented with uh, deep learning algorithms to recognize the scenes of these videos. And this allows us put, to put video tags or subtitles in, into these videos. And this allows us to do searching and makes it easier to, to, to find the contents you wanted. Now in terms of sensing, um, usually most of the customers will not find this kind of if-then clause sufficient because it's a bit too uh, simple. And um, we have already talked to most of them and a lot of them seems to have difficulty moving toward to a more complicated rule. So that's, this is why we are proposing this, uh, where we actually build a few of these um, algorithms that allow us to use the same if-then clause but replace the rules and make it a bit more intelligent. And this is what I mentioned earlier, intelligent observations so that we can make um, informed decisions with less anxiety. So now about our go-to-market strategy. Because our services require hardware. So initially, we would do our own brand hardware and then we actually push out all these devices to different markets through our distributors or directly. Now another opportunity is that there's actually a lot of vendors like telcos or hardware or software connectivity company and they have already released their hardware all over the world. And the reason I mention this is that by recruiting all these devices, this gra uh, greatly increased our reachable devices. These are the number of devices that we can reach today, not in the future. We have already currently tens of thousands of devices out there and uh, between 20 to 30 percent of these devices they will come back and subscribe for a between five to ten dollars per month US dollar of a service. Now we have worked with telco and security companies and they have about hundreds of thousands of customers the, the companies that we work for and in this segment you have about 80 percent conversion rate It's generally pretty high. For hardware and P2P vendors, um, these are the software that are already installed in the camera for easy installation. And quite a few of them talk to us to actually add more services, intelligent services, recording services, on top of these services. And the currently, uh, as of today, as of today, the devices that are online, that we are reachable, is about 10 million devices. And the estimate is about 10% of them can be converted to come back and pay for the services. These are the actual companies that we work with. And these are the numbers that I showed you earlier that came from. In addition to our distributors, we have worked with a majority, actually, of telcos and security companies in Taiwan. And we are one of the only two certified suppliers for video surveillance service in Taiwan for the Taiwanese government. We have worked with hardware vendors and we have worked with the software stack connectivity uh, vendors and we are currently um, delivering the first solutions to our customers. This is the team. Uh, where I, this is actually just the co-founders. I'm Wei Chao Chen and I have been working in the tech field for a very long time. Uh, so I probably built quite a few of these chips that you're actually using today or maybe mobile phones. Um, I'm also a adjunct faculty at the National Taiwan University. Okay. And JP Yang is my business uh, partner and he has already delivered over uh, products in over 60 countries. Uh, so a lot of business experiences. And VivoTech is our um, corporate sponsor currently. He helped us get started and currently owns about 20% of our company. And I think this is my call to, to you guys. Uh, we, with your help, we like to make Skywatch a better company. We want to build cutting edge technology and make best of class products for the years to come. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. <laughs> Judges? Raymond? Um, so which market sector are you trying to target? Because you raised um, in the very beginning of your presentation, um, you're comparing yourself with the security services that third parties provide, right? And a lot of companies contract these services because their compliance requirements, because they need instance response capabilities that only these uh, type of third parties can fulfill. 
Um, by following, you through, following through your presentation, I don't think that is your competitor. Um, I don't think you know, you're trying to compete with those services, but then I don't understand you know, how, how are you positioning yourself in the market? Are you trying to target the home user? Are you trying to target businesses? Um, so can you please explain? Right, so um, basically our original target are small business. And we found that small business and the home user has a lot of overlap, right? Um, the reason that I mentioned security companies is that we are actually providing the technology layer for them. We are working with them. So there are two major security companies in Taiwan and we're working with one of them. Right? And we're providing the product to them. And the end users can be so stores and then can be end users. And we like to build a product for our actual users and then we can demonstrate the product to our actual channel. So, so your initial customers would be the security and surveillance providers or system integrators where you're providing, where you're providing a product to? They're more like, uh, well, they're more, a bit more like channel. The, the product will be used by the, the end users, right? So initially, we push the product to the end user and make sure it actually works and stable enough. And then security companies sort of came to us, and then we start working together. That this is how, how it progressed. So yeah. the users initially are the small businesses? Most of them, yes, because small businesses, they, they're more concerned about security and they actually have money to spend in terms of the recurring revenue part. So we try not to go to the biggest market where people are throwing out cheap network cameras and like I, we cannot compete with like uh, a, a lot of Chinese vendors who are selling cameras at like 300 RMB, right? It, it's basically suicide. But we found that this particular niche, all these small businesses who are willing to spend money, but they are not willing to spend 100 bucks per month, right? They, they're, they're happy to spend 20 bucks per month. And this is where we come in. They cannot take um, consumer products and use it for their businesses. Jerry, please. So before I ask my question, I just want to get uh, understand a little bit. Just, you're a software company, right? Uh, correct, yes. Yeah, okay, cool. So I, I guess I'm going to follow up on the, on the, on the question that the gentleman asked. Uh, normally, the security companies are a, a large fixed cost kind of system. So it usually means that regionally, you only have like two or three dominant players because if you're sending out a patrol car, it's easier if you have more customers there. And which means that by, by default, most of the security market is going to be like monopoly or duopoly. And which puts you in a very wrong position in terms of negotiation. Have you started negotiating with them? What's the power structure you're experiencing right now? Oh uh, yeah, um, this is why we start from Taiwan, right? I, I, uh, we actually have some potential reach, but currently we work with one of these two largest uh, security companies in Taiwan. It is extremely difficult to get a business deal. It's extremely difficult to get in, right? We've known them for like ten years, and the company is about four years old. And they talked to us for three years, and we got a deal last year. So it's really long process. But uh, I think the advantage is that this kind of platform, the real platform, is really difficult to build, and takes time. And because we're certified by the, by the Taiwanese government, it means that we have good quality, and the security is good enough. And then they they basically say, okay, we think you guys are good enough, and then we started a, a formal deal. So the the shipping volumes are increasing uh, in that respect. On the other hand, right, we have actually shipped to uh, the, Ch the Chonghua Telecom just recently uh, several thousand units because of the same logic, right? They, they wanted to see if you're actually for real, if your product can be used. And I think this is one of the process. You, you got to wait, wait out this period and make sure the platform works. So there are a lot of uh, startups that are doing the hardware version of computer vision. For example, just detect the age and know that it's going to be much more efficient in terms of uh, computational efficiency. And if you're closing the deal every three or four years, that means that by the time they roll out the products, uh, you only sign three or four more deals. And, and those devices could completely change the scenario because your software is now, I wouldn't say useless, but it's, it faces very stringent competition from uh, uh, cameras that are already output in. Uh, lower data volume and all that. How do you see that? Yeah. Okay, uh, first of all, I'm sorry for all these hardware vendors here, but hardwares are cheap, right? The, the ROI, right? It's less than one year. So you can, the installation is more expensive than the hardware actually itself, right? We, we're doing some of the, the computation on the camera, some of the computation on the cloud. If it deems to be too expensive to do it on the cloud, we can replace the camera within a year and it won't be a lot of capital expense. Actually sending out a person 
and, and putting the cameras or devices on the wall, that's more expensive. Yeah. Time's up. Thank you very much. Thank you, Skywatch Innovation. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, now let's take a short break. The rest of the contest will start at 3.50 sharp. I'll see you back on stage later.